What's going on y'all? I'm Nathan Rich with Southern Salt Kite Fishing and today we're going to talk fishing line 101. We're going to discuss the pros and cons of everything from monofilament line, fluorocarbon, four strand braid, eight strand braid, and we're even going to talk about fluorocarbon later. Okay, so everything you need to know about fishing line is going to be in this video. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive into it. All right, y'all. So the first line that we have is monofilament line. The biggest pro to use a monofilament line is its price point. I mean, monofilament line is, you can get it anywhere from $2 to 150 yards of it. To, I mean, some of the best stuff is only $5 and you're getting, you know, 150, 330 yards. I mean, it's really cheap line. So if you have kids that you're wanting to uh, get them into fishing, you're not wanting to fork out a whole lot of money on line that they might uh, mess up or get a lot of wind knots or things like that and monofilament's going to be your dude. Now the cons to monofilament line are that it has a larger diameter than say braid, um, has a little bit of line memory so you will have more uh, wind knots coming off of your spinning reel setups and um, ultimately you're just not going to be able to cast as far with this line because it a, it does have a larger diameter, it's heavier, uh, and just has more drag. Um, but it is good for, like I said, getting kids out there and getting them fishing or live bait applications. Monofilament line is going to work for you. Moving on to fluorocarbon line. Now, only just a little bit more expensive than monofilament, fluorocarbon still comes in cheaper than braid. All right, and the benefit to fluorocarbon line, 100% fluorocarbon, is that it's virtually invisible in the water. So you're getting a line where if you're fishing super clear applications uh, like South Florida or something like that, where it's crystal clear, it's, it's invisible in the water, less detectable by fish. Now, with that being said, fluorocarbon the cons to it is if you're throwing this on a spinning reel you are going to have problems i mean this stuff has insane line memory if you're throwing it on a bait caster you're going to be able to get away with it you're not going to have problems but if you put it on a spinning reel when you go to cast out i'm talking about that line is going to it's going to spring everywhere so horrible horrible line memory if you're fishing spinning reels i would stay away from from spinning or spooling your reel up with fluorocarbon leader. Um, with that being said, it also still has that larger diameter, more drag, and overall you're gonna get less casting distances out of fluorocarbon leader. All right, moving on to the benefits of braid, and in particular, four strand braid. This stuff is significantly smaller in diameter. So when you're spooling up your reels with braid, you're going to be able to fit a lot more line on your spools. Uh, with that being said, it's lighter, has less drag, which in the end is going to result in significantly further cast. So if you're throwing artificial lures and you need to cover water, braid is going to be your dude. With that being said, it does have a little bit of its, its downfalls. All right, This is more expensive than fluorocarbon monofilament uh, coming in at roughly 15 to 20 dollars 450 yards okay so a little bit more expensive but you're not going to have the wind knots you're not going to have the larger diameters you're going to be able to cast this stuff much further you're going to get smoother cast uh, and you don't have stretch so when you're talking about hook sets it's direct um, that's another benefit of fishing braid now I'm going to go back to the cons. There's something I forgot. All right. Something you have to take in consideration. If you're spooling your reels up with braid, you have to use a monofilament backing. If you don't know what that is, YouTube it, Google it. You have to make sure you back your reels with monofilament before you begin spooling it with braid. If you don't do that, your braid is going to free spin within your spool. And if you catch it or hook a large fish, it is going to rip every bit of your line off the spool and there's going to be nothing that you can do about it. So you have to make sure you put backing on your reels. That's a major, um, I won't even consider it a downfall, 
or a con. It's just something you need to consider when getting into fishing and using braid. Moving along to my favorite. This is stuff that I use on all of my reels. More expensive, we're talking about eight strand braid. This stuff is roughly 20 to $30 for 150 yards of 20 pound line. So it's more expensive, but it's even smaller in diameter. It's significantly more smoother, which creates less friction coming off of your spool, which in the end is going to result in longer casts. So if you want to be able to fit more line on your spools, have smoother, longer casts, then an eight strand braid is going to be your dude. This is your guy. All right. Now when we're talking about eight strand braid, I, I like um, Power Pro Super Slick, but there are other eight strand braids out there like Suffix 832 is an eight strand braid or Daiwa J Braid Plus 8. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to put all that in the description. So if you want to check out any of this stuff here, it'll be down in the description. But when we're talking about the cons to this stuff, we're talking price. Um, and that's about it. I mean, this stuff is, is killer, killer line. Um, and just when you put this on, and you sling it out there, you're gonna notice a difference immediately. When you compare this to mono, we're talking, I mean, it's not even close to comparison, and it even throws a little bit further, a little bit further than your four strand braid. But, great stuff. Once again, you have to put your backing on your reels prior to spooling this up. If you don't know about that, check it out google it youtube it you want to make sure you're putting backing on your line all right moving on along we have fluorocarbon leader all right fluorocarbon leader needs to be put on the end of braid and possibly mono but but more so when you're using braid really you want to um, connect your fluorocarbon leader to your braid you don't want to be throwing artificials or live bait out there, straight braid. Um, it's more visible in the water. That's a con to this stuff. It's more visible in the water. And by connecting a long uh, three to four foot leader onto your braid, you're just gonna be able to get that section of, of line out there away from your, your main line on your lure that's less detectable in the water. But even more so than that, we're fishing inshore. We're fishing around a lot of docks, a lot of barnacles, oysters fish themselves have teeth um they have sharp scales they have gill plates right all of these things when rubbing up against your line create abrasion and braid under a load is going to cut super easily um so with that being said when you put that fluorocarbon leader on there you're getting more abrasion resistance and if you come in contact with any oysters or barnacles or fish with teeth, you'll be more likely to be able to land that fish because you use fluorocarbon leader um, and you got a little bit more abrasion resistance on that line. All right, so now that we've talked about our line, let's talk about line sizes. So for anything inshore, I would say the most common line size would be 15 to 20 pound test. All right, so if you've got one setup that you're dedicating for inshore line, it, I would say it either needs to be 15 pound test or 20 pound test. Um, with that being said, if you have a dedicated trout rod, I'd move on down to that 10 to 12 range on your test line. Um, and if you're dedicated to, to bigger fish like upper slots and bull reds, you might wanna move from 20 to 30 maybe. Is it needed? No, not really, especially me fishing out of a kayak. Uh, fish aren't going to gain that much line on me, and uh, they can't apply that much pressure without moving my kayak. So, you know, 20 pound test is fine, but definitely if you're trout fishing, stick to that tw 10 to 12. Uh, for all around anything, you're going to be 15 to 20 pound test, and then, you know, bull reds, 20 to 30 uh, pounds will suit you fine. With that being said, you're using your fluorocarbon leader. A very, very easy knot that you can tie this on to your main line is gonna be a uni to uni knot. I'll go ahead and post that right here, all right? 
three to four foot um, and then tie it on if you're using artificial or anything really you can go ahead and use a loop knot and I'm gonna put that right here so if you want to tie a loop knot there's your dude right there all right it's gonna show you how to tie a loop knot the size floor carbon, you have a lot of people that go out there and they put 10 pound main line, but yet they use 20 pound floor carbon leader. To me, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm gonna match it. If I'm using 20 pound main line, I'm gonna use 20 pound floor carbon leader, so on and so forth, okay? Um, probably one more thing to consider uh, you have a lot of people that, that say, well, this stuff right here, you know, uh, 200 yards of 15 pound fluorocarbon leader cost me $15, yet 30 yards of this 20 pound right here cost me $25 or $12, 15, whatever it costs, right? They say, why can't I use this larger spool that's cheaper? Is this not the same stuff as your fluorocarbon leader? And um, the simple answer is no, it's not the same. Um, but can you use this as a leader? Absolutely. But what you're going to get out of this is the invisibility of your line, but you're gonna lose your abrasion resistance. If you were to compare 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader to 20 pound fluorocarbon main line fishing line, you're gonna notice that leader material is significantly stiffer, has a little bit less uh, line memory in it because of its stiffness, and it just has that abrasion resistance built into it that your normal fluorocarbon main line does not have. So I believe we just about covered everything. If there's anything that I left out, anything that y'all want to know about please make sure you comment i will get back to you and answer any questions that you may have but uh, i hope y'all enjoyed the video hit that like button if you did subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see y'all next time